well, would you look at that? I think it's 100, 1 ohm, 1 watt resistors. But if we remember last time, I said that a 1 watt resistor would look like this. And it seems I was wrong. And that kind of sucks. So instead of ordering these probably 2 watt resistors, I got 1 watt again for the heat gun. Which sucks. <clears throat> because now I probably have to put four of them in there to prevent it from blowing up again. Or I could just put one of it in there and it's gonna blow up again. <laughs> I seriously don't know what to do. Um, this, the one that was probably in there is rated 1 watt. Um, there was like 200 watts flowing for it to blow up. I mean, because it's, I think, yeah, the formula for power is I squared R. So you have 1 ampere times 1 ampere times 1 ohm is 1 watt. So, yeah. Something like, so there's 1 amp flowing that's at 230 volts that's a lot for not doing shit but oh well it's Chinese crapware so I guess I have to deal with it hmm also maybe you can hear it sizzling in the background it's this battery I don't know if it's audible I'm charging this for quite a while now <laughs> um, up to 12 volts and it's currently at 1.4 amps this is a acid battery um, that came out of a mot motorcycle and for some reason this chamber here was completely drained like completely drained it was completely empty and uh, my dad in his wiseness thought hey let's fill it up again with distilled water because he learned you have to refill them with just water but this thing was completely empty like nothing so we put distilled water in there and lo and behold let's look at the thermal image of that ah, switch on the camera so you see it yeah you see that you see that that's how many degrees oh god uh, something like in the region of 50 yeah 55 that's quite bad <laughs> um yeah you see the rest of the battery is quite fine well, 34 and this thing is just cooking here but strangely only the top like not the bottom thing it's just just the top and this cell here is cooking to the bottom <laughs> I don't know the, this thing's completely broken I'm just gonna let it charge and charge and charge till it eventually evaporates all the power um, just to see if I can revive it the thing is <clears throat> at the starting when I was starting charging it it was like at 2 volts because my dad fucked up his uh, battery charger because he tested it he wanted to test it if there's power he shorted the leads there was a spark and he says yeah there's power you guess what there's also a fuse and the fuse didn't light the spark <laughs> so the fuse uh, well it didn't completely melt there's still like 11 volts on the output because it's probably at some kilo ohm range. Then he hooked it up, nothing happened. Yeah, well, great, guess why? <clears throat> so I hooked it up to my power supply back here. Come on, camera. I always have to click on the camera to activate the screen again so I can see what I'm filming. So, yeah, you see, this is like varying quite a lot for just being on a battery. Um, 
as it's varying that much, I just guessed it isn't a complete short. At least I hope it is. <laughs> because if it is, it's that stupid just waste of energy. But oh well, maybe maybe I can save it. I don't know what it's doing. So yeah, at the start, it was like at 180 milliamps. So this current has gone up considerably since then. It was it always climbing up slowly, more amps and more amps. And I don't know how these batteries work. So yeah. I limited to 1.5 on the power supply, so because this is getting like really hot here, and yeah, almost uncomfortable to uh, touch. Like with my bare hands, it's almost starting to hurt. And but I have quite fragile hands, no thick skin or anything, so I'm quite sensitive to heat. But yeah, it's 50 degrees or something. You saw that on the thermal imaging yeah but that thing aside we have resistors i will get out the heat gun again and put in a new resistor i hope i will because well maybe maybe i fail at the soldering job again i didn't properly measure them what i did measure is it is for my crappy multimeter that's where did I put it? I, I don't even know where I put it. Um, can you see it? Can you see the multimeter? Because I thought I put it like really close nearby. I just can't see it anymore. <laughs> huh. Oh, there it is. Found it. Okay. <clears throat> so, if you remember, this multimeter is fucked at the 200 ohm range. So I just tried at 2000 ohms, shorted the leads, it showed 4 ohms. Well, that's 4 times more than I want to measure, so I just put it across these, showed 4 ohms. Okay, I guess it will be a pretty low resistance then. In the worst case, it's just a dead short, um, which will blow up my uh, poor heat gun. Um, but yeah, anyway, it will be broken either way. These are actually from Tata. T A Y D A electronics. Um, so I hope they aren't complete garbage. I mean, they look nice. They come on this reel here. Does it say the resistance anywhere on here? No, of course not. Um, but it said it on the package it was in. Um, and I guess if you look at Tata Electronics, it's probably a source that doesn't sell crap even though i bought them from ebay and then there was a little um piece of paper in there telling me hey tate electronics great well battery's going up to 1.5 amps well not now anymore but it was at 1.5 i have no idea how the current is varying that much i just hope it's the charging that's making bubbles in here that varies the surface <laughs> that's uh, get in contact I don't know yeah horrible thing for some reason it was empty I don't know if my dad just let on the lights or something and just drained it to nothing but doesn't explain why this cell was completely empty and everyone everything else was fine I don't know so yeah I will try to solder one of these in so be back in a minute well the new ones in here I also left a little gap under it, so maybe more airflow or something. I should also bend it a bit away from those diodes, just in case. Never know, never know. Um, okay, so new resistor in there, old one out. Um, looking at the leads, well, it say they're the same size, so let's hope they don't start glowing. Um, yeah, and you also see my nice holding contraption here, which holds it on this teeny tiny piece. And I should probably open that now so it doesn't break off. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't put it in here because soldering iron and way too high up. I need it down here, and I also need it in a different angle. So, yeah, well, I maybe could have used that one, but no. So now comes the moment of reassembling it and testing it 
and I kind of don't want to test it because it could blow up and I don't want that <laughs> but okay so I'm gonna reassemble it and then we test so BRB well I got it back together I also tried to test it and it didn't work <laughs> I just switched it on for a second just in case it wanted to blow up um, maybe this would be a good moment to test if this thing is actually blown. I mean, it looks blown. It, it pieces have fallen off. So, but let's get the multimeter out. That doesn't work. Um, put it to 2000 ohm. I don't know if you can even see the display. Can you? Yeah, you can. Let's short it out. And we see 17 ohm. That's bad. <laughs> I had four ohms before you fucking thing. Well, I guess we have to live with 15 now. What the fuck? How can that change so much? It was four ohms. And now it's 15 all of a sudden. Oh, well, let, let's put the thing in between. Yeah, nothing. Okay, so we can confirm that it's dead. I'm trying to touch the open parts. Nothing happens. Let's see, all the way around. Come on. By the way, I ordered a new one, so a new millimeter, so hopefully. Um, I will have a working one soon. Yeah, so it just doesn't work. Come back to 14. Let's measure one of the new ones. Yeah, okay. <coughs> so, I don't know why this thing suddenly decided to go back to... Well, now I just changed the switch. Here, this is 200 ohms. It says 1 ohm for that short and strange measurements for open circuits. So it's probably blown. I should open that up <laughs> and take a look inside. Yeah, let's go back here. Oh, 3 ohms this time. Okay, so at least this resistor was blown. Um, but what are we going to do? We're going to plug it in. And fear for our lives. Well, actually, just me. And you're gonna laugh when I die. I won't know. Ha <laughs> look at that, more. Oh, it's gonna be hilarious when he blows himself up with that stupid piece of Chinese crap. Okay. Um, I'm gonna switch it on for a second. Nothing. Out. Nothing. Out. Okay, so... That was not the problem, <laughs> um, or it was just a part of the problem. The thing is, I only heard one bang. By the way, I tested it gets power. Um, I can switch on the heater. The heater still works, just like last time. Um, but yeah, the rest of the gun is dead. And that sucks, because that thing cost me 30 bucks. And I don't like to waste money. Um, I mean, of course, I'm wasting my time here. I could just work another hour or two and get a new one for that money. But, yeah. Suckage. So, now that we have a broken piece of kit, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I probably will store it away for the future when I'm wiser or I can't afford a new one. <laughs> um, in the meantime... I will use, yeah, look at this, this is my uh, candle factory, which is full of wax and shit and smokes every time I use it. Okay, so I got this at some point because I thought I need something with higher temperatures. Um, this thing goes up to 500, I don't want to go over because, well, you see it's oxidized already and, yeah, this thing would probably spit flames if you just put the heater on full. And, yeah. Better not do that. 
So instead, just let me see if I can even see that. This nice blue flame. It's of course totally overkill. So to demonstrate, we were gonna just cook this thing. I think I even used this blowtorch in the last video. Let me put the resistor inside. This. Come on. Nice. Can you see that? Yeah, well, barely. I'm gonna put you here and try to burn that thing. Well. I guess that's bright orange. It looks pretty reddish on the display, and I guess, but. It will be on the video too, but yeah, this is just bright, really nice orange here in real life. You should probably wear goggles while doing this. Um, ooh, it still glows. I guess it's really ceramic in there, it's just <laughs> glowing with the heat. Okay, so, yeah, that's probably how it looked like inside this thing before it went pop. But I guess it went pop for a reason. If this thing draws 200 watts, this blows up. Huh. The thing is, I don't really have time to reverse engineer this. If this was everything I did, then I probably could reverse engineer it and look what other components are there that could uh, um, pull so much power that it blows up that resistor because I think these 200 watts in idle just doesn't make sense. I have the feeling that because it exploded so violently that it actually really acted as a fuse but well the new one didn't blow up. Yeah, well I don't know. <laughs> um, I just guess there was a short in a semiconductor that short and it just exploded this one and due to the high amp flow it also broke the bridge in the semiconductor. I don't know. I, I really don't know what's wrong with this. I thought it was just the resistor that was crappy. But as we have seen, it isn't. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to take the multimeter and open that now. So, guess what? I, I found it. <laughs> found the fault. Can you see that? The second small resistor from the left is a bit blackish and decolorized. Uh, so much decolorized that I cannot read its value anymore. If I would have to guess, it's white, black, black, silver? <laughs> God dang it. So, I don't know what that would be. <laughs> um, God dang it. I, I should plug up the leads. Hang on. Fuck this. <laughs> don't get in my way. They're not coming out. <laughs> I want to see me struggle. God damn it, how hard can this be? You know that quote? How hard can it be? Jeremy Clarkson, Top Gear, and whatever that new show is named. Like, ah, okay. <laughs> Seems it was in there for a while. Okay, it's not broken. <laughs> um. Okay, so, I don't know, camera please, let the display be on, um, yeah, so nothing else is broken, just this one resistor, um, to fix it, I would have to get everything out of here, and then try to replace that one with a value that I don't have, what is, yeah, the only thing I can, Actually, I can't do shit with it. It could be green on the top, but there's a silver ring next to it. <laughs> oh boy. I think that's broken. <laughs> I will take it out and look on the other side to see if there's any markings about the resistor. But the fuse marking is here, so I guess there will be no markings on the other side. I mean, it didn't even bother to use silk screen. It just... Uh, use the the copper to make text. So 
I mean, this is a super cheap one. The next one is slightly more expensive. A whole 10 bucks that I spent on a multimeter. And yeah, we will see how well that fares. So let me take this photo apart and see what's on the other side. Oh, what have I done? So, <laughs> yeah, the display is of course attached with the zebra or zebra strips. Um, yeah, of course I'm not having a camera that can view this, but basically there's a lot of tiny strips going from the top to the bottom. Um, then they're isolated to the next one. So you can basically make a bridge of these. These strips in here are way smaller than these, by the way. They're like, uh, I can almost not see them. If I had to guess, it's probably 0 0.2, 0 0.25 of a millimeter thick, each of the stripes that can conduct current. And these are, uh, yeah, well, how, how big are these? 1.5 millimeters? So yeah, you have several of these strips per pad that goes to the display. Actually, I, I was lucky um, that the top and the bottom have different imprints on the strip because I took it out and was like, well, what way do I put it back in? <laughs> yeah, but figure out the right way. Okay, now we see these, um, these contacts here on the outside. Um, and if you look closely, we have basically six different levels. Um, and if we count here, we have, maybe I should plug this, don't, don't do this while well, there is a battery on there. Don't want to break it even more. It's probably fucked already. <laughs> By the way, there was a fuse in the way that I had to take out. This is a 0.5 amp fuse. And yeah, this is actually going to the, the normal voltage and current port. This one is the 10 amp one. Um, so at least there's protection for <laughs> normal measuring. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a crappy 0.5 amp fuse, which... Stop it! Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is really thin, thin, so... I wonder why that didn't break. Because I managed to fry a resistor here. But, okay, 0.5 amps is probably... Two... Uh, more than... <laughs> this resistor can handle. I mean, I squared, so 0.25 times whatever resistance that is, which is probably high, so probably was easy to go over <laughs> the rating of that resistor. Okay, so we see we have a two, we have a content uh, contact short out here, and <clears throat> we have these resistors here. I don't know if you can even see that. We have one. Two, three, four, and two is broken, and two is hooked up via this. So for measuring, there's this part, which is then shorted to either this, 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 or this. And now I would have to look at the other side um, to see which is which. So <coughs> let's see. This is horrible. Okay, so we measured ohms, so our, this doesn't make sense, <laughs> um, but actually probably does make sense. So it happened when I measured 20 milliamps, hmm, 20 milliamps. What resistor value could that be? Um, I have the feeling that it's, god dang it, um, <clears throat> 20 milliamps, 200 milliamps. I have the feeling that it's by power of 10. And to confirm that, let's look at the others. Oh god, oh no, oh no. <laughs> you see that? There's, there's ball bearings holding this thing in and well not holding it in but making a click 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 noise and they just come out right 
So let's take some extremely greasy tiny balls and put them back where they are. Yeah, you cannot see shit. I know. Sorry. Oh, camera, please. Can you see shit now? Maybe you can see shit. So that goes there. That goes there. Oh, don't don't go there. This will probably not stay there. Okay, <laughs> I will attempt to put this back in. Oh, it worked, it worked. Great, okay. You probably just saw my face. I'm not a big fan of showing my face on the internet, but oh well. No one's watching this channel anyway. Um, God dang it. Good or bad? Okay, this is current. So let's go back to the other side again. Okay, what do we see? We sadly do not see powers of 10. We have black, white, white, silver. I don't know what that is. Seriously, I need better light. Or at least any light. <laughs> This will probably blind you in a second. I'm gonna use my phone's camera to shed some light on this. Oh, it's actually gray and green. No, wait, it's maybe. I'm gonna start the computer <laughs> um, because it contains my cheat sheet for resistor values. I have never seen black or green here. Or is that some super rare? Um, not resistance. Um, ba 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 ba. Accuracy. Precision, I think, is what I wanted to say. Okay, so. Yeah, but you see, these aren't the same values. Like. Well, actually, they are. God dang it, the, the battery is going crazy again, making fizzing noises. Okay, so. I don't know where front and back is on these, so I just guess the side with green is the starting point. So here we have green, silver? I don't think silver can be here. We will see in a second when my computer is up. And sadly, I still have a path around here that I should. Oh, come on, I fucked it up. <clears throat> okay, so we will have a cheat sheet in a second. <clears throat> yeah, this is this must be a great view for you just looking at resistors. Okay, so yes, silver can only be at the second one. Okay, please go away. Okay, so I said we st or tolerance. It's called tolerance. So green is tolerance. Because we have green silver and cream. That means tolerance is 0.5%. That's pretty good, I guess. So I only have 1 and 5% <laughs> tolerance resistors, so yeah, fuck it. Um, okay, so we have. We start black, that's a 0, and 9, 9 silver, 8. Server is so that's point nine nine. So almost one ohm. <laughs> Where is it? Okay, let, let me. I have to calculate. Sorry. <laughs> so zero nine nine times point oh one. So it really is 0.99 ohms. <laughs> Who makes this? So we have 0.99 here. Um, I don't know for which one is it, but probably for the 200 micrograms. No, oh, wait, milliamps was the one that's broken, right? Ah, I don't know. Okay, so this starts with white, then probably black, black, silver, green. So 
that's 900 times so that's 9 ohms well could it be that it's I don't know the second ring looks black to me but I just guess that it's 9.99 ohms <laughs> can't really say for sure so yeah we went one tenor up so what did I say 9.99 right which is 10 ohms basically then we have white black 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 that is 900 why does it have to be black by the way is this gold is this maybe gold not silver could be gold let's see of the other side I don't know <laughs> could be gold or silver um, 20 milliamps 200 milliamps 2000 microamps 200 microamps because that's what was that purple black 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 that's 700 ohms <laughs> that is black right god dang it this this table's just not at the right height for looking close at things okay conclusion I have no clue about shit um, this could be 10 ohms or it couldn't and I don't know and none of the other resistors seem to be broken and I'm getting a new new one soon and I don't have small 10 ohm resistors like that or do I maybe I do 10 ohms 10 ohms so that's 100 gold uh, that's 10 ohms well, at least I would have the right size of resistor but I don't know if it's 10 do I have 100 I have 100 I have 1k and I also have one which is here but it's way too big <laughs> okay so I'm gonna figure this out and just tell you in a minute because this camera is running for only two minutes ha huh. I'm only talking for two minutes already so okay BRB <laughs> well I couldn't figure it out so I just put it back together and hey it still works I didn't break it completely so these zebra strips work pretty fine let's see so that's 2000 kilo ohms to come on <laughs> no this one come on 200 20 kilo ohms, yeah, 2 kilo ohms, and that's supposed to be 200 ohms, which is still fucked for no reason. This is the 200 milli ohms, uh, yeah, two, no, 20 milli ohms, 200 milli ohms. Like, this is the one that's supposed to be fucked, not this one. I don't know why it has a 90 degree offset. Maybe I was stupid and didn't look at it properly. Um, yeah I don't know and I don't care I get a new one which will hopefully have auto ranging so it just can't blow up all the time and I will also be not a kid and try to measure too much current with this or measure current with the resistance I don't know what I did to this one yeah it's a crappy one it's it is what my parents gave me to play with um, I don't know, that's probably be, probably where I have the cheapness from, because I'm also incredibly a cheapskate, so... <coughs> yeah. So, today we have two devices that we could not fix, which sucks. At least now that's off the table. I ordered a lot of resistors that I cannot use now. Because I have no clue where the hell I should put them. What do you do with one ohm resistors? Put them in series? Great. Um, yeah. I'll just blow them up. Also interesting. This one that I cooked is now grey. And does not have any color anymore. So. Yay. Broken. Piece of shit. <coughs> Yeah, this is infuriating. Hey, look! There's 1.5 amps. 
for the battery. So yeah, it's, it's always climbing and now I limited it because this thing is really getting pretty hot. Yeah, I don't, wouldn't want it to be any hotter than it is now. And guess what, as soon as I say it, it goes down. I don't know if that's the temperature. Trying to suck away some heat with my hand, but no, that so it isn't the temperature. No, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Maybe it is the temperature. <laughs> it would inev inevitably go into a meltdown. Who knows? Yeah, that's everything I have to show today. Nothing and nothing and nothing but failure. But hey, I, I successfully used my desoldering pump whatever this is which is also crappy from china but well at least this one can't burn up in flames or something uh, okay i don't know what my next project will be i mean we have the the boost converter that i over engineered a bit so what we have back here is a charge pump it is supposed to give us more voltage to switch the MOSFET here. But what happens instead, when switching the MOSFET, I I don't have a double H bridge. So I can't switch the MOSFET hard to ground. So I just put a resistor in here to pull it down to ground. But if you constantly pull the charge pump with this to ground it just plummets to 5 volts and stay there so great no 10 volts for me well I can just use my second power supply but that's quite overkill I wanted it to be in one system and it didn't work so yeah initially I bought this charge pump to switch a MOSFET but yes yeah, you've seen it doesn't work huh, stupid eh and well actually I could put a NPN in here and switch the ground on <laughs> with the NPN M maybe I should do that but actually before I do that I just should try it with a um, op amp <clears throat> because an op amp is probably switching faster than whatever I made here um, well, actually, these two are probably switching quite fast, but the Arduino is slow as fuck for some reason. Um, I know my... I thought my scope was fucked, because it showed slow rise times. But when I went up to a certain frequency that should... Well, that the Arduino should be able to switch at, and just nothing happened, I have the suspicion that either something in here isn't up to switching at megahertz speeds well it's actually quite reasonable right no wait megahertz megahertz should be like one two megahertz should be should be possible it's the gigahertz shit that doesn't work huh maybe it's the mosfet that's too slow who knows um but yeah it doesn't work i can't get over 70 volts because i need a higher frequency and I can't get a higher frequency. Um, in the current configuration, this thing pulls 700 milliamps, which is quite a lot. So the MOSFET heats up fairly quickly, and that's bad. But oh well. <clears throat> I guess I'll just leave it at 70 volts, and that's it. If I ever have the time and money to make more advanced shit, then I will maybe come back to this. Yeah, next project, I don't know. <laughs> so, if we don't do this, and this is replaced, and this thing is broken, and this thing is also broken, well, the only thing I could do is a teardown of these things. I mean, I will keep the hard drives, I will not open them, because, yeah. I don't have a lot of old hard drives and I quite like having a lot of hard drives even though these are what 80 60 gigabytes something around that not much yeah but I might 
take apart some of these because who needs CD drives anymore? <clears throat> and I will take a look at these cards that are back here and the RAM sticks and whatever. Hmm. <laughs> That's great. I have no idea what I'm gonna do for my next project. I mean I have a project running and it is involving these. Um, that's a circuit. Arduino Pro, RF, um, wait, what does it say? <laughs> it's that, I can't even read that. Oh, <laughs> because it's upside down. RFM69HW, and this is a HC05 Bluetooth. <clears throat> yeah. So, this is a private project that I started ages ago, many many ages ago. I'm still not finished <laughs> because I'm slow as fuck, but I have all the PCBs manufactured now, so this one and the other one that I need, now I have to make the software, and oh my god, it's, it's annoying. <laughs> For some reason it's super annoying because... I mean, this part here is easy, because this will always have power, or is supposed to always have power. But the other part is supposed to uh, run on battery, like one of these fire starter ones, which are supposed to be 3000 milliamp hours, but are just 1.4 or something. But yeah, I call them fire starters because, oh, it's China, but yeah, I'm gonna use these <laughs> and sell it to customers. Oh boy. Well, I mean, I've used them already and they didn't catch on fire yet. They're just lower capacity. Which is quite good because if they're not pressed in there, they're less susceptible to outside force. So if I accidentally smash one, it's probably not going to go up in flames immediately. <clears throat> but you shouldn't charge it anymore. And they're fucking expensive. But oh well. Yeah. The thing is, the other one has to run batteries. And writing code on an Arduino that's battery friendly is hard. Because you have to do like all the sleep stuff and it's annoying. You have to look up all the, the API stuff and... Yeah, I'm programming like for my job already and... I started this when I was still unemployed and, well, living at home, which I still am. But at least I'm not un unemployed anymore. But yeah, I had a lot of time and I had fun doing this. But, I mean, now I have fun with work, which is quite ironic. I have more fun with I, what I do for work at the moment, even though I hate it, um, than making this. Like, I tried it the last few days, tried to work on it and just, like, sitting there... Oh god, I can't concentrate, I'm gonna wait for the weekend, and I'm not gonna do it on the weekend, because, hey, it's weekend, I don't wanna do shit. Yeah, it's horrible, but hey, maybe one day I will finish it. I mean, uh, <clears throat> at least I get so far to make the hardware. Making the hardware is so easy, actually, because, I mean, I had to do some testing, putting these together on a breadboard and seeing how they work but it isn't much what you have here in this case it's a voltage regulator which is super easy you just put it there <laughs> and it works a buzzer a transistor to control the buzzer um, the RFM the Pro Mini a capacitor and the HC05 and that's it and yeah, putting this together on the breadboard wasn't that hard because all I had to test is that it can communicate with each other. Um, and that's it. That is all I have to test. No actual functionality test. So because well, actually I did a functionality test. I um, put this HCO5, well, which isn't an HCO5, which is actually a clone. Let's see if I have it here. This is not it, this is not it. I probably don't have it here anymore. Where the hell are they? Oh well. Are they in here? Could be. 
Well, you're not seeing where I'm searching my stuff in here. Let's see what stuff's in here. Come on. Come on. Okay. <clears throat> and it's not here. Okay. <laughs> Too bad. I actually, I don't know where I put the rest of it. Basically, search on the internet for HC05 and you will see a small board which has a lot of components on it. Um, oh, actually, I have one here. Let me see. Can I get that? Hey, yes, no, maybe. Oh. Okay. Don't fall down. Okay. Yeah, you can't see that. It's way too mm, reflecting stuff. Let's get this out here. Come on. Okay, then not come on. Just come out of here. Okay, so this, which is here. Let's see, can you see this here? This is tiny. But <laughs> yeah, it's going on here. Um Arduino Pro goes here. And I tested it with the clone. <laughs> and the clone of this which also works. I tested it with the phone. You, there's an app where you can communicate with such a Bluetooth serial interface via just an app and I sent it to the Arduino which sent it to uh, my computer and vice versa so I could communicate between phone and computer via this thing and the Arduino. So that worked. The clone works. The clone is so tiny like I don't know much smaller than this big chip like maybe a bit more than a quarter of it, but really tiny. I don't know if you can see how tiny that actually is it's because of the fish eye lens, but <clears throat> yeah, it's really small. Um, so, surprisingly, the clone works with much less components than this. <laughs> like, this one is packed. You have so many small components. You have an, a crystal oscillator, you have some inductors down up here, you have a lot of decoupling caps and resistors and everything <laughs> and on the board on the clone if you you probably also can find that in youtube it's a blue board this one is a green one and the clone is usually blue and has a tiny chip on it and not a lot of other components but yeah it works and i wonder why does this one have so much shit because the other one i mean it doesn't have like this direct mode um, but you don't really need the direct mode like probably for some advanced shit but I'm not doing advanced shit here but I'm actually I'm but <laughs> not that advanced so all I want to do is communicate with the phone um, because I want an app yes I can make apps I'm a programmer that is able to make apps for the phone um, only Android by the way because I don't own a Mac and you need a Mac to compile for iOS and I don't really want to purchase a $2000 Facebook machine to make some stupid app <clears throat> especially as the web, uh, app is web based so it will um, just work on the other device too with I just have to compile it so I might borrow the Mac of someone. <clears throat> but yeah. That's a project that I'm working on. Which I might finish in the future. When, I have, when I'm finished, I will show it to you. Because then, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I actually should sell it. Because it's quite useful. A lot of people said, hey, I, I would like to have one of these. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a horrible marketing person. I'm the guy that sits... In the basement, programs away. Well, not necessarily the basement. This is the basement, yes, but um, I'm usually sitting in my room in the first floor. But uh, there is, well, not much outside influence. So I just sit there, do my thing, and that's it. Which I also do for my job. I work from home, which is really, really nice work like for <laughs> for companies all over the world well, so far it's not been a lot of companies 
but mainly from Asia. But yeah, that's the other side of the world for me. So that's quite nice. It, it it's really great fun because I'm kind of fed up with people in Germany or the US. Well, actually, the US is, I think, at least not that bad as Germany, but Germans are. <laughs> Huh, how should I say this? Old-fashioned. Old-fashioned and... <laughs> yeah, a lot of assholes, actually. <clears throat> like, if it comes to jobs, there, a lot of them are assholes. Except the ones that either don't have a job or only have a low-paying job. They don't care what you do. But those that are, well, in my family, who have or will have, higher paying jobs um, are quite the assholes. Mostly because they're like, yeah, well, you're gonna make so and so much money to afford this and that. And I'm just like, dude, I just want to be happy and live. And that's enough, which I am doing now. Um, the job in Asia doesn't pay German wages, obviously, because it's Asia. They can't afford <laughs> my full German rate. So I probably would make double that what I make there so but I just don't like it here companies here are ah uh, I mean I don't want to work for one company the reason is I don't want to get stuck on a project because if you go to a big company you take the risk that they will say well we have this legacy project here now go and maintain it don't fix it, maintain it. Um, there's a difference between maintaining and fixing it. Because fixing it would be like either start from scratch or start to slowly fix parts of it. No, they're not paying you to fix it, they're paying you to maintain it. And that means <laughs> keep it working at all costs. Um, but don't do things that are not necessary because well they're a company and the company wants to make money <laughs> well obviously it's a company um, but they want to make money and they don't really care about you at least in, in Germany I never had the feeling at the companies that I wore at that they would actually care about you like I mean if I hear like managers and shit talk about oh these people they're if they don't have a job they're worthless and we should just <laughs> deport them or something I'm like dude that's people and they are supposed to be working for you and you're just like yeah, this mentality is, is quite uh, strong in Germany that if you don't have a job you're worth shit I mean, it's the same in the US, but in the US there's a lot of people that work on the internet. In Germany that's not the case. I mean, Germany is quite small compared to the US, so you don't have that many people um, or that many companies that are active online. And yeah, I, I don't even know about German companies that would be online and <laughs> put would pay me as a freelancer there are a few very few of them that might be <laughs> doing this but then you have the germaness you know if you do shit for germany it's for a german i mean i have a buddy who did some stuff for germans and it's these germans are idiots <laughs> i mean those that i'm working with aren't um, as well versed as I am in what I'm doing but they're trying their best to understand it they're asking questions um, they're not just doing uh, making stupid assumptions and think they're true automatically like they're doing it in the US or in Germany because in Germany your boss will be just like hey why doesn't this work blah 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 and they will not just ask why does this not work they will ask um, why does this not work? You, you maybe you noticed different in tone. They're basically blaming you for it not working, while in Asia, 
I get a honest question why does this not work what would we have to do to fix it <clears throat> is there a way to fix it and I will tell them the possibilities but in Germany you are at fault or in the US too um, yeah the, the Asians are really great actually they're super nice and everything works fine over there and if there's a hardship you can fix it you're not getting fired or you don't lose the customer <laughs> Um, you can fix shit. You can volunteer to say, yeah, I'm gonna fix this on my time, which I had to do for my first job because I fucked it up. But yeah, it was the first job and uh, yeah, I got help um, because I couldn't do a certain thing that I ha had to do. But yeah, it worked out. I'm still working with the same people and everything is fine. I, I would never feel like that here in Germany. It, it's just not German. <laughs> Very sadly, it's, it's really sad that the state of people here and in the US that they are. Oh well, I'm, I'm rambling for how long now? No. Now see, the camera says I'm rambling for four minutes now. And I don't think that's true. And the battery is pretty low. I don't know what's going on. Either when I'm talking, I for I basically talk faster than time, and I'm in a time warp bubble, so time goes slower around me when I'm talking. <laughs> it can't be them just talking for four minutes now. It feels like fifteen or something. Well, I will see you at the editing table, and this will be the end of the video, so you don't have to listen to my ramblings anymore. So, yeah, bye-bye.